Today I'm bringing you my very first Vanguard video, and it is my Blaster Roll Paladin deck. This is the first deck I created, brought to my locals, got stomped on, but it's a learning experience. Vanguard is a really fun card game. I played with my high school buddies, and it was just really, really fun. We bought trial decks, played it for a while, and it was just, it was something else. It was so different from Yu-Gi-Oh, and I just really loved it. So let's just dive into the deck, shall we? I will also be uh, talking a little bit about the basics of Vanguard for newer players. Also, uh, I will also put a link in the description because uh, the Vanguard Bushi Road, they're actually really, really helpful on learning new rules and the game and everything. And I love their instructional video or videos. It's just really hilarious. So just a quick layout of how the mat will look. So you will have six circles, uh, three in the front, three in the back, and then the middle front circle will be your Vanguard circle, which uh, your starting Vanguard will sit on. And I used a Wing All Brave. So we're going to take a look at the card real quick. It is a beautiful, beautiful hollow. We have the attack power here, how much damage it does, the clan, the type of uh, monster it is, Wing All Brave, normal unit, the effect... The shield value, the grade it is, typically grade zeros are either triggers or your starting vanguard. And this symbol specifically means that this guy will boost any unit that is in the front row. So, for example, uh, if his effect, if this guy gets ridden on uh, by a, a royal paladin, you can shove him to your rear guard and he'll boost whatever unit is in front of him. So the plus about this guy is that when he gets rid on, you shove him back to your rear guard, and then you ride with a blaster. And when your blaster swings and the attack hits, you shove him back into your soul, which is underneath your vanguard. Uh, you have plus one by adding a blast, any blaster card to your hand. So typically, it's a it should be a uh, grade three blaster if you don't have one, unless it's just a blaster dark or the main dude blaster blade. So that is our starting vanguard. Now we're going to talk about triggers. Now, triggers only activate when you uh, drive check and when you uh, damage check. So when you drive check, drive checks only happen when your vanguard attacks. Uh, you draw the top card of your deck, and then you get whatever the trigger effect is. Same thing with damage checking. If you get hit, you take the top card of your deck, put it into the damage zone, and you if it's a trigger, you get the effect. So, for example, we are running four heal triggers. You can only run four heal triggers in uh, all the decks. It's a rule. You can only have four heal triggers unless everybody would run uh, four crits or eight crits and eight heals. But you can only run four. Next, we are running four draw triggers. Uh, if the trigger activates, you draw a card. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the cool thing about Margul is it's not a completely dead card. If it's in your rear guard, uh, you can put them into the soul, and then that unit, uh, any of your old paladins, get plus three. It's not bad at all. Also, uh, get plus 5k when the trigger activates two to one of your units. I didn't know if I mentioned that. Now we're running eight criticals. Criticals means you do an extra damage when you, hit, when you swing. So if I attack and I um, drive check a critical... Uh, my opponent would take an extra damage instead of just one. So we're just running eight criticals, uh, just because I thought I I felt like I didn't need stands. And a lot of people still just run eight criticals, four draws, and four heals. I mean, some decks even run uh, all nine criticals as long as the card name is different. You can only have four of the same card in your deck. So really, really nice. But yeah, I just didn't want to run stand triggers. <laughs> I just felt like everybody is running 8 crits, so I'll just run 8 crits as well. So that's it for our grade 0 slash, uh, grade zero slash triggers. Next, we're going to be moving on to grade 1s. Uh, now for grade 1s, I am running 4 Toy Poogle. Look how cute it is, Toy Poogles. Um, he... This card specifically gets plus three if there's two or more grade threes. This card specifically, so it becomes, instead of six, it becomes nine. And then if it's in your back rear guard circles, 
uh, the front would get plus nine, which is pretty nice. It's more of an end game card, but I also love the hollow because it's just squares. Look at him, he's so cute. I'm lending a hand. It's only natural for you to win. Yeah, I got stomped on by Kagiro and Overlords. Thank you. Anyways, living dark memories. <laughs> so next we're running uh, four of the Blaster Grade 1. Uh, Knight of Friendship K. Uh, if I swing my Vanguard's Blaster, he becomes a 10k beater, pretty much. Uh, again, he is a boosting unit. All Grade 1s are boosting units. Uh, next, I am running four perfect guards now perfect guards you discard a card and it will absorb all the damage that is taken so for example uh marion here marion is a 5000 shield if somebody swings in let's say somebody attacks me with 10k i have to and i've had marion in my hand i have to put it into the guard guardian circle and soaks up 5000 damage but this soaks up everything so if somebody swings in 50k i could just activate a perfect guard and stop that and then to fill out for the grade ones, I just used Marion because I had a whole bunch sitting off to the side at the time. Next, we go to grade twos, which is the beef, the beef cake, the main dude, Blaster Blade. Uh, this symbol right here means uh, it's called counter blasting. So when you take damage, your damage will be face up, and then counter blasting is taking your damage and putting it face down. So you counter blast two, and then you can retire uh, any rear guard unit pretty much uh the side thing is is there's no counter charging which means f uh taking your damage and flipping it back up so you have to take damage in order to activate blaster blade which kind of sucks is kind of makes the deck really kind of inconsistent and you have to con constantly take damage and you take six damage and you lose which kind of sucks but it's not entirely bad but it's just there's no counter charging so you can't flip up your damage uh, next, we're running three Blaster Dark. It's a Blaster deck. You'll see why I'm running Blaster Dark later in the future when we get to grade threes. But pretty much, if he's on a, uh, you can only activate his Counter Blast when he is on the Vanguard Circle. Nothing special or anything. Uh, next, we are running Star Call Trumpeter. She's very, very adorable. You Counter Blast for two when uh, this unit is on a Vanguard or Rearguard Circle. Uh, if you pay the cost, you search your deck for a grade two or low, uh, grade two or lower blaster and call it to your rear guard. And then it's not bad. You go plus one, and then for our last grade twos, Knight of Lords, he better veer. Uh, if he swings, he becomes twelve, twelve k. He's just like his younger brother, pretty much. Even when the shadows presented a path, his loyalty never wavered. So edgy. Very, very edgy. Next, for pause, I forgot one more thing about the Grade Twos. All Grade Twos are considered Interceptors. Interceptors, uh, when they are in the front rear guard circle, they can move into the Guardian Circle and block for you with their shield value. For grade Threes, I ran two Palamedas. If you have two or more Grade Threes um, on the field... Uh, he gets plus three. Uh, this effect means when your Vanguard attacks, uh, he gets a twin drive system, which means instead of uh, one drive check, you get two cards. So you flip two cards off your uh, off the top of your deck. So Palamedus, because I mean I didn't really have anything at the time. And then the Beefcake, we're running Majesty Lord Blaster. We're running four of them. Uh, that's the reason why I am running uh, Blaster Dark as well. I ran Blaster Dark. I keep talking in the present tense when I, I really don't play this deck anymore. But the um, cool thing about this, if there's Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark in the soul, he gets plus two and plus one extra damage, which is pretty cool. Uh, next thing, you could put Blaster Dark and uh, Blaster Blade, if they're in your regard, put them into the soul, and then uh, he, get, he becomes a, 20, a two, 20k beater which is pretty good as well, too. And then you also get the plus two and plus one critical if you don't have Blaster Blade or Blaster Dark uh, in your soul. And then for shits and giggles, I had this guy. I don't know why I had this guy. 
but his effect is so long and drawn out, and I never summon this guy. I don't even know why he's in here. Honestly, I, I don't know why. It's so strange. But basically, he's like the trump card. So, you Soul, soul Blast. I don't even know what he actually does. Um, soul Blast for three until the end of the turn. This unit battles all your units in one attack. When this unit attacks, put all your cards in Soul Lane Blaster Blade into your drop zone. Because plus the. Okay, yeah, it's just. I don't know why I have this card in your deck, in my deck. But. That is it for my Blaster Blade deck. A uh, very old school deck. Very, very old. But I really enjoyed playing it. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I played it with my friends only a couple times. Uh, just because uh, all my friends just kind of left me and didn't really have that much time to play anymore. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this very small lesson on Card Fight Vanguard. And a, t a look at my OG Blaster Blade deck. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bruh!